Hi, everyone. So I'm just going to present quickly on Power Genome, which is a uh, project that I've been working on, uh, which is a data platform, I guess you could call it, to compile everything that's needed for a capacity expansion model, uh, specifically in the US context. So we are uh, not fully operational yet, but getting pretty close to having all of the data that, that would be needed for uh, a model. And while we are currently limited to the, the Gen X capacity expansion model, we're very interested in um, adding, adding modules to Gen X to expand it to, to be able to put out uh, the format of other open source capacity expansion models. So the, the goal here is to spend less time wrangling data, uh, getting things in the right format for the right regions, whatever else, and more time actually running models, uh, testing sensitivities, and looking at, at different policies. Um, it, as anyone who has ever run this type of model is probably well aware, there's, there's a large, large amount of data that you need. So on the left here, it's just these are you know all of the things you need for Think what exists today. What are the generators? Where are they? Their capacities, heat rates, uh, operating costs, constraints. What are the profiles of, of you know, current renewables? Uh, what does the transmission system look like? Demand profiles, what policies are in place? And then in order to look at future planning periods, you need what are the, the costs to build new generators or transmission? Um, what are the uh, operating characteristics of those new new resources. What are the, how much wind and, and PV can you build? And then what are the uh, hourly profiles of those look like? How is existing load going to grow over time? Uh, what new loads are gonna come on? What are the hourly profiles of those? Are they gonna be flexible loads like EVs or, um, or heat pumps or, or things like that? And then how much might various fuels cost in the future? And, and for anything where you have kind of hourly profiles, uh, demand, uh, generation, you, you ideally want those to represent a consistent weather year um, so that you don't have uh, historical data that you're projecting forward for different time periods. You have you know, uh, inconsistent profiles. So with Power Genome. Hey, Greg, uh, this is are, Tyler. Um, it looks yeah. like your slides aren't updating um, yeah. for those of us on the outside. Oh, or at least more than more than just me still see that. Uh, just slide. Can you? That's, that's also for me. The set the case. Yeah. I. I think that you should take it out of presentation mode because all we see is like what the author will see for editing the presentation. Oh, uh, that is. Uh, I exit presentation mode. Okay, well, we'll just do this. Can everybody see these? This is working, thanks. Okay. Okay, so um, Power Genome, in addition to being a platform that, that compiles all the data, we are trying to provide all the data as well. So we're basing this on EPA's IPM model of 67 continental US regions. Uh, bulk transmission, which gives you bulk transmission constraints between those 67 regions and 2011 hourly demand profiles. But you can consolidate those regions however you want. So you could do a nine zone model or a, a five zone model of the Western US or whatever you want. Um, we have all the data on existing generators, fuel costs. Uh, we're going to develop a policy database and uh, we're in the middle of developing wind and PV profiles. And then we have all of the data on that you'll need for future planning periods. Um, uh, oh. So in order to do this, there's a command line function. You've got like a settings file. You say where you want all your stuff to go. And then this was my original settings file. It's gonna copy it in here. I've got my planning periods. I've got all of my different cases. And then I've got my input files. So everything kind of gets copied over. Your settings file uh, for each individual case is also saved. And this gives you a lot of, uh, it's very nice because then if you're ever wondering what did I do for this? Did I really do that settings right? You can always go back and, and look. 
Um, and since we're, we're keeping this short, I'm gonna kind of end right there, a little bit of a teaser on olive power genome. Um, but I do wanna also throw out that we're, we're trying to help, trying to clean and open source uh, hourly demand profiles from FERC 714. So I, I tweeted this just the other day, I have a GitHub profile with code extracting all of those hourly profiles. Um, and the, it, it's there for anyone who wants to go take a look, add to it, anything like that. Um, how am I doing on time? I was giving you an extra minute because of the technical problems. So you still have uh, another minute, but uh, if you want to stop now, that's also fine. I'll just, I'll just wrap, I'll wrap up there since, uh, it, well, I'll just say, you know, with Power Genome, like I said, this is a, a work in progress. We're getting pretty close to a, a fully functional version that outputs just for Gen X, but I really am interested in working with uh, other people to develop kind of the, the translation modules to, to do outputs for Pipesa, for Switch, um, for kind of whatever, whatever other uh, open source capacity expansion models people are interested in using. And, um, oh yeah, just kind of wrap it up there. Okay, uh, it's time for questions. Um, mm -hmm. I, I saw one from Tom, Tom Brown. Yes, I was um, just wondering, uh, are you also going to include grid data as well? So for the transmission grid in the US? At the moment, we're just doing, uh, at least this first version is going to just be kind of bulk transmission constraints between the, the 64 regions, which if you consolidate regions, it does consolidate the transmission constraints, but, but we're not looking at any actual uh, transmission data. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm watching the uh, chat window, but I haven't seen more questions come through. People type, start typing. If people have got the participant window, they've got a button where they can raise a hand and uh, Robbie can call on you if you want to ask a question by audio, I guess. Yeah. Hi, Hi Greg. Today. This is the issue from Intellectual Ventures. I have a quick question here. Uh, mm -hmm. So, about the transmission capabilities between different regions, uh, have you guys done some validation? Uh, about uh, wh whether the, the transmission capability between each regions are matching the kind of a aggregated transmission capability uh, uh, comparing to the real system? No, we haven't. And, and I, I mean, this is something where, you know, there's, uh, we're, we're just counting on an EPA's IPM model to be uh, valid. And I know that there's like a new transmission line between California and Arizona that just got approved. I don't, I have not had a chance to, to do any validation of, of their model. Um, I have talked to EPA about it and they feel reasonably confident, but no more than that. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. more, more questions? Joy from Europe. This is, this is a project which is, um, which is similar to projects in Europe. We, we must have some questions. I'll throw one out there if no one else will. And specifically because you're asking about Europe, um, is there a connection between the projects in Europe and this project such that there's consistency so that we have one <laughs> format of data that we can then work together with rather than multiple formats in different places? No, there's not. So I'm, I'm building on uh, the, the Puddle open source project to compile EIA data in the US. And uh, because we, we started from that, there was no, no, there was no attempt to, to try to have a consistent format between uh, existing European projects and this one. Um, yeah, I, I would be, I'd be happy to kind of sit down and, and do a comparison, but I don't know if it's uh, the, what the, the potential difficulties might be at this point. Great. So I was asked, I see on the chat that I should say my name. So it's Taco from Simon Fraser University, Sustainable Energy Engineering. Um, yeah, so that's, that's interesting. It'd be, 
I guess hopefully it gets into a nice machine readable format that we can easily convert different formats so that it's all nice and easy to do. But, but it'd be interesting to know what the different formats look like in different places. Yeah, Thanks. I mean, everything, everything should end up in, you know, kind of SQLite databases or, or Parquet data or, or something else that's easily readable into, into code. But, um, but I'm not sure what, what other difficulties might arise. Okay, so um, I think the time's up now. So thank you, Greg.